Good morning friends. I'm out in the garden and it is a very, very exciting day. My greenhouse gets built today. Uh, today I'm excited though because I get my hoop house built. It's going to be great for plant starts. It might not have been originally what I had thought of, but I have found that when you let yourself be open to suggestion and open to change, good things come. <laughs> and so I am feeling extremely excited extremely just energized knowing that when this gets done I can shift gears into seed starting and that is really really exciting to me uh, my friend Sean will be here soon we're going to walk you guys through that process of what it looks like why we chose the hoop house pros and cons things like that but right now I'm about to get this space cleaned up and ready for him to get here been seeing Sean and Nathan work on my hoop house which is going to be my greenhouse I've talked to you guys about that a lot they're actually still working on it and we'll do a grand tour and I've got lots of questions to kind of ask uh, Sean but you guys hear me reference our friends Sean and Melanie a lot uh, we talk about them in a lot of our videos and so I wanted you to meet Melanie this is Sean's wife and they run Mindful Kitchen which primarily uh, Melanie takes mm -hmm. care of you want to kind of explain what Mindful Kitchen is yeah so Mindful Kitchen is kind of like our value-added uh, company it's kind of what where like any um, ferments fall under that but primarily right now it's elderberry syrup so kind of in the fall and winter months we're doing elderberry syrup um, we we have bees so yeah. we take our all our honey all our liquid honey and then source all the ingredients as much as we can locally to produce elderberry syrup so yeah and then Sean does Mindful Farmer, which would be farm consulting. He's actually who we hired to be our farm consultant. He does the hoop houses. Uh, just lots of really cool stuff. But they have a really unique story. Uh, you guys know that Nathan and I are really passionate about rallying behind people and encouraging uh, people to dream big. We encourage you guys. We also like to just link arms with our friends. And they have a really big dream and vision uh, for what they're wanting their future farm to look like. And... I get really excited dreaming big with them and I kind of wanted her to explain that to you guys. So we have big dreams for, for a farm that's a um, not just a place to grow food but just a gathering place um, somewhere where we host workshops. I'm a, My background is in nutrition so very passionate about holistic nutrition and just seeing people move from just the standard American diet to um, just a nourishing diet that fuels them well for their life and um, yeah just so that people don't end up just with the typical chronic diseases that are so yeah. common in our culture. So um, my my passion is kind of around the health side of it, um, but then that just fits in so well with Sean being a, a grower, a, a professional farmer, really. Yeah. So we just kind of have this vision of combining um, health for people, health for the land, um, encouraging people to steward their bodies, steward the land well, um, and just kind of the synergy between those two components. So. We have lots of lots yeah. of dreams about that, but yeah, hopefully eventually we'll be on our own property and farming for ourselves and just getting to encourage people to yeah. And they are wonderful encouragers. Sean's knowledge when it comes to growing for profit um, and growing for efficiency, that was something Sean really taught me how to be efficient in my farming, and I will value that 
for a mm -hmm. long time. Um, but obviously, like, we can rally behind our friends. We see what they're doing. We see the movement that they're making and the impact that they're making in our community. They are very involved. Sean sells to uh, Kim at the local farm stand, which you guys have heard me mention as well. Melanie teaches a lot of classes and so it was kind of a no-brainer as they were like opening up and sharing about their dream with us and I'm not sure what that looks like long term. You guys may be hearing uh, more about their farm endeavors and how we can all kind of pitch in and help them with that but I just wanted you guys to kind of get to know the face behind uh, the friends that we reference all the time. So now that I've kind of given you a background of Melanie and Sean, she has grown in one of the hoop houses that I'm mm -hmm. getting. So I'm going to be using this primarily for a seed starting greenhouse. However, once we go kind of tour it in a little bit, I'll show you guys just how versatile it is. So I will be starting seeds in there. However, I will also be growing food in there. Sean's even made it to where long term when we're no longer on this property, it can be a chicken schooner. So really mm -hmm. just like the sky is the limit on the possibilities with this. So Melanie had this in their backyard. They live in the city uh, in a neighborhood and their whole backyard is chickens and garden <laughs> and it's really, really impressive. Yeah, we're the crazy people in the neighborhood. Yeah, hey, everyone needs that person. <laughs> um, and so you grew a lot in there. So I just wanted to ask you from a home gardener because mm -hmm. Sean farms professionally, um, but she stays home and homeschools her children and does Mindful Kitchen. So for a home gardener mm -hmm. who that's not your job, how did this hoop house help you? Yeah, so I we've actually grown in it. Um, we put it up this fall, so we've only grown in it fall and then now winter. But I love that it seemed to like kind of extend the season. Yeah. So um, like primarily we had like brassicas out there, so like kale, um, cabbages, like all sorts of cabbages, um, and then a bunch of salad greens. So yeah. it seemed like like we were able to grow longer. Um, I loved that things were it just felt like more self-contained. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am very much a noob when it comes <laughs> to gardening. <laughs> like I've always been around it, but it was always Sean doing it and I was just getting to benefit from it yeah. and getting to do the kitchen side of things. So for me, it's like I need things to be very hands-off. Mm -hmm. um, I need it to be easy. Like I don't really want to do a whole lot of problem solving. Yeah. Um, and so just having it in that more controlled environment took some of that element of problem solving out. Yeah, and then this year you plan on doing flowers in there? Yeah, we're gonna do a yeah. lot of flowers. Um, yeah, I'm still kind of like, Sean, like I really want my salad greens in there yeah. because that really that's like my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Like I can just walk out there and pick salad every day for lunch or like pick it all at the beginning of the week and have it all week. Yeah, I was really surprised. We'll take you guys out there. I'm gonna do a little tour after it's finished up, but it's huge. I mm -hmm. mean, what you're going to be able to grow in this, I am really excited because for me it is hitting all those marks. I'm actually, Sean is building tables that can lower down and then go up. So I can, once seed starting season's over with and I push the things outside, I can just raise the benches up and then grow inside. So I'm actually going yeah. to trellis and grow some tomatoes in there. So I'm just really excited for the possibilities. Yeah. But we'll go out there and check on the guys and let you guys see what's going on. So it is the third and final day of my greenhouse build. I am so excited. I'm going to take you guys out there. It'll get finished up today. We'll do a tour of the inside, but I am just feeling so good. I am feeling so excited. I have got my seeds out, getting ready to to plant um, and seed start. And so I am just really excited because it's going to be a really good day. So my greenhouse is officially done. This is Sean, you guys hear me talk about him a lot. Y'all met his wife Melanie uh, previously on this vlog, but this is who did my farm consulting. Um, I'll link that video up if you want to check out more details, but you wanna just kinda tell them kind of about the farm consulting and like what you do before we dive into like a tour of the greenhouse? Yeah, yeah, so we, um, my wife and I do consulting for uh, gardeners, homesteaders, farmers, uh, I farm professionally and have been doing so for about four years and then we have our beekeeping business that we've had for about eight or nine years now. Yeah. Um, and so it's given me both the business experience and the pr production experience. Uh, we've had a garden for over a decade now. Uh, and so what I've seen is, you know, there's a lot that I've learned on the professional side that can really help homesteaders and gardeners get ahead and kind of 
not make some of the mistakes that I made yeah. along the way. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, hiring a consultant that's going to help you kind of uh, jump over some of those hurdles early on is really going to pay dividends in the long run. Yeah, I agree um, too. So I can tell you guys, I've been growing for eight years. Um, I've, you know, sold to farmers markets, restaurants, things like that. But we consulted with you beginning of the summer mm -hmm. and it just changes everything. Having a professional opinion and someone like from the outside being like, hey, why don't you try this? Or just giving suggestions, I can tell you, you have been a huge asset to us, like a wonderful friend, but this man has poured so much into me and has helped me so much. So I really encourage you guys, if you're looking for consulting, uh, I'll link all their information below how you can contact them, but I know that it was well worth it as far as it, like the investment just the knowledge in the direction. I think that's backyard gardeners or if you're trying to start a farm, you get really overwhelmed and you don't know which direction to go. And he is really good at helping you streamline and figure out what revenues you want. So our consulting, we do both in person and remote, uh, especially for people that are out of state. Yeah. And we charge by the hour or by the day. Um, or if someone wants to have us out for a full week to be hands-on and yeah. plan the whole thing. Do the thing. Get the greenhouse constructed, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. We, we do. You know, my, my passion is to see other young farmers, new farmers get started um, to help change the food system. Yeah, it's so exciting. I originally was going to put a wooden greenhouse in the rock area that I had showed you guys earlier. And COVID happened and prices of lumber skyrocketed. And then after talking to Sean, he's like, okay, let's talk about this. And for me, aesthetically, I want to feel something. And that was kind of the debate we had. Like, I want to feel something for my greenhouse. And just to have someone being practical, like, it doesn't make sense. And I was talking to him about this when he was building this greenhouse. This thing is huge. It is massive for the amount of money I spent on this versus the wood one that we were going to build. This is at least double the size. And it's super versatile. So we're going to take yeah. you inside and kind of show you. But I'm able to start plants in here. And then he's done some really cool things to where I can grow in ground. And we'll just kind of talk through that. But... Yeah, that's kind of my like philosophy of yeah. like farm infrastructure is that it should be durable, uh, light on the landscape to where it's not a lot of permanent infrastructure you can't take with you if you decide to move farms, uh, and then also really versatile. So this can be a um, a greenhouse, mobile greenhouse. We put skids on it. I left little yeah, uh, we'll, we'll show, we'll show you all that. Yeah. Um, but it can be a chicken schooner. Uh, if Jill decides, Jill and Nathan decide someday they don't ever want to farm another thing again. <laughs> They could take the plastic off the ends and it's a carport. Like, yeah. It could be a thousand different things. Right. And I think that's what this versus doing the the wood infrastructure. Right. Uh, it really only serves one purpose. And then once that wood rots, it's just garbage. Yeah, um, that's true. You want to tell them the size of this one? Yeah, this is eight, uh, 14 feet wide and 18 and a half feet long. Uh, 20 feet with the little skids that we'll, we'll show Yeah, so we'll bit. show you guys. All right, so these were what he was talking about on bending the pipe to make it into a chicken schooner. And do you just want to kind of explain about that, like how that would happen? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's really a lot of the same setup. It, it's for the chicken schooner, instead of uh, plastic on this side, it would be uh, chicken wire. And on this side, it would use panda plastic. Um, I call it panda plastic. It's a silage tarp. So it's black on one side, white on the other side. So that'll help keep the chickens nice and cool in the summertime. The skids, uh, and we'll put a little plastic cap on that just so no one, you know, <laughs> trips over it or cuts their finger on it or anything. Uh, but this just will help it skid across the grass. But it's light enough to where two people can pick this whole thing up and move it wherever we need to go. So we built it in this open space and then we're gonna move it, uh, Nathan and I will move it into Jill's garden where she wants it. Um, and to keep it in place, you know, because it is mobile, we actually use these things. It's called a ground grabber. Pretty cool. And it is impact driven. So it goes two feet into the ground, uh, front and back, and it's it out. Just comes right out. Yeah, that's really And so awesome. that's gonna keep it from, you know, blown away in severe weather. Uh, and for the chicken schooner, you know, that, that's really important too, because these will be out, you know, in a pasture, an open field. Uh, to where it's really easy to tie it down in a, a windstorm and then pull it up and then scoot it forward every day to get the chickens to fresh grass. So Sean made this door magnetic. Look, oh, go ahead, do it. You mean do it? Yeah, go ahead and do it. <laughs> this means it's official. This is like the equivalent of breaking a bottle <laughs> yes. on a new ship. We were waiting to share this experience with oh. you guys. Oh. <laughs> Look at 
Nathan asked me if I was gonna paint the door. Don't worry, I won't do that. It's official, you guys, this feels so good. Uh, what Sean did is he put a magnetic strip on the inside of the door, that way it just latches, which was really, really nice. Yeah, like that, that's, I say my, my philosophy of farm infrastructure is to yeah. keep it simple so there's no moving parts on this door. Yeah. It's just a magnet and a latch. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, you know, if there's a bad windstorm, you could just throw a sandbag in front of it if you just want to be absolutely certain it's not going to pop open. Yeah, well, let's go inside um, and show them around. Another cool thing about the door, too, so like this greenhouse doesn't have roll-up sides. It just has a vent in the rear and then this door. And, you know, I, the, the farm that I currently manage is about 45 minute drive from my house. So we're only working eight to five, Monday through Friday. So I can't raise and lower sides on my, on my high tunnels. Um, so for this greenhouse, I, went, I just went plastic all the way down to the bottom and the tunnels that I did out at the farm I managed, we just did as tall the doors as we could. And in the summertime, we just opened doors all the way. And instead of like raising and lowering sides up and down, we just, no, no one has time for that. So, <laughs> so we did automatic vent in the back, really large four foot wide door by seven feet tall. And the cool thing about this is because I'm just using fence hardware is you can actually take the whole thing off. So in the summertime, that'll be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can just take the whole door off its hinge uh, and, you know, store it for the, the summertime. Yeah, and so he was mentioning the automated vent. This is really cool. So I think that's worth explaining to you. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is really neat. Um, so this is an automatic vent. Uh, you can get it from most, like Johnny Seeds has them. Um, but what's cool is this black cylinder is actually filled with beeswax. And so as the sun hits it, as it gets warm from the greenhouse, it expands, the wax expands, and it actually is enough force to open up this vent. So this is a, a one and a half foot by four foot vent. So it lets a lot of heat out mm -hmm. and especially being high in the greenhouse. And so at about 70 degrees, it'll start to open. By the time it's 95 degrees in here, it'll be all the way open, letting out as much air as it possibly can. Uh, and still, if it's too hot, you know, what, what, I, what I typically advise folks is, you know, rely on this in the early spring when the temperatures are changing a lot. Take the door off when you get into like May, uh, June, you put the shade cloth on the top and that comes with the greenhouse. It's a, it goes all the way down to the ends, all the way front and back. Um, it's a 30% shade cloth and that really cuts down a lot of the heat. And, and you it, have the option to put a door in too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and if it's still too hot, this panel is by itself and you just take out this wiggle wire. It just uh, <laughs> loosens, it unwiggles. <laughs> And, uh, and this whole piece opens up and then you have complete airflow through here. Yeah. So another great thing about this and the way that Jill's going to use it is, uh, is kind of a, a two part, uh, a, a dual purpose space. So she can start her seeds on the tables in the, in the springtime, but she could also have this on top of in ground growing space or have raised beds underneath it, uh, which is what a few of my other customers are using theirs for. Uh, but with these tables I built for her, she can have her, lettuce growing underneath it or maybe she's starting tulips or narcissus or something like that that's you know early spring be able to put her tomatoes on top and then you know whenever the the lettuce is done underneath and she's ready to put peppers this whole thing moves this up is and my out of the favorite way. part so then she can you know do peppers over here and squash over there and then what's another great thing about these these tunnels is the tunnel itself uh, you know, gives you the structure you need. So instead of driving T-post um, and and trying to figure out how to trellis your tomatoes, you just use the center purlin yeah. as, as your trellis. And so it saves you a lot of infrastructure. I really hate T-post. <laughs> so I don't want to drive any T-post. So I, I like to trellis from the center purlin. Yeah, and so we'd actually uh, shortened this table because Nathan is going to build me a desk because I do want this to be a place that I can come out and create and figure out what my plan is for the garden. We're going to have a desk built over here and potentially even put like a sink wash station for some of the vegetables and the lettuce. So it's just huge. How many, if you did a full table like this one on both sides, how many trays did you say that it would hold? I think it was 64 trays. Yeah. So that is a lot. So um, a lot of space. And you know, what's, you know, we were talking about how do you make the most of this space and you know, what they do at commercial greenhouses is they might do hanging baskets, you know, if they're doing yeah. ornamentals, um, like we do, uh, out at the ranch, we sell ornamental strawberries and, you know, deco pots, and you can do those in the middle to be sold. You could do them under here to be sold, you know, for, for spring uh, plant sales. Um, and then we were even kind of brainstorming about 
how you other uses for this space if if Jill and Nathan outgrow this greenhouse that we could you could take this uh, panel off of here you could put rabbits on these trays you could use it as uh, egg laying yeah. uh, schooner and these would be the roosts or you could put the rabbits up here and do meat chickens underneath uh, there's it is so, so many different versatile yeah so that was another thing like he just mentioned several different ways we can use this if we ever don't need it for starts it's good season extension if we just moved it from pasture it's good for chickens for rabbits so when we were really thinking about the price to build a wooden greenhouse in this it was honestly a no-brainer um sean does these he can travel what is your travel radius anywhere in the state of arkansas right yeah. now anywhere in the state of arkansas like he said his consulting is virtual he can do that online and stuff like that but i really just you guys asked a lot of questions why we chose this over a wooden one and yes this is not your glass greenhouse but we are striving to be a profitable farm we're getting there but we want to keep you know moving forward and the wooden greenhouse didn't make sense for us, especially long-term when he was asking us what our five year, 10 year plan was, we're not gonna be here in five or 10 years. So it didn't really make sense for us to put that wooden greenhouse in the garden mm -hmm. for it to stay. And so I really challenge you guys to think about your goals and your dreams and what you want. Um, he can kind of give you a rundown on the pro So I've mentioned to you guys before that we have applied through the NRCS for an EQIP grant to get a high tunnel like this put up. We actually got approved for that, uh, but I was pregnant with June and it just seemed like a big commitment. He does a bigger size uh, mm -hmm. up from this and that is actually approved through that EQIP grant if you want to talk about that as well. Yeah, and, and really this one could be if you don't go with the mobile option. Yeah. Uh, Equip doesn't cover mobile type schooners or greenhouses. Yeah. Uh, so they really want them to be in ground permanent. They want to know that you're using it to grow plants for at least three years. Yeah. Uh, before you can refashion it to some other purpose. Right. Um, so if you wanted to do this one permanent with roll-up sides, we could do that. Um, one this size or, or, or a little bit longer. And then we'll do up to 20 feet wide right now because we can still use the same uh, gauge pipe. If we go any wider than that, then it's a much larger pipe. And right. And then, you know, there's guys that are doing that at, at a huge scale. Um, you know, what, what we were really wanting to accomplish is, you know, there's no one in state that's making these kits. Right. Um, and then even the kits, too, can be a little inaccessible for the hobbyist or the homesteader mm -hmm. uh, because it just seems so daunting to put them up. Oh, yeah. Like, Nathan could have never done this. We actually bought a high tone when we moved in here, and it's still just a few yards that way <laughs> because he just didn't know how to do it and so having a professional it took him three days to do this but granted he was just trying to fit us in but like he said he can get this up in a day mm -hmm. um so that is i mean it would have taken nathan probably several weeks to try to put something up like this so having a professional just kind of makes that really fast yeah and and two you know it it's uh you know what you save in if you did it yourself, right? you know, you're having to buy a kit that's shipped to you. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the shipping is either, if it's free shipping, it's just included in the right, cost of the right. kit. So uh, this tunnel itself is 2,200 bucks. That's tax delivery and installation included. Yeah. Um, with the tables, it would be 2,700. Yeah. Uh, and that's really what a lot of the kits are running. Mm -hmm. um, we do all metal kits. So the end walls are metal, everything is metal. Uh, sometimes you might see a kit that's like, oh, it's only a thousand bucks. But then when you look at it, it doesn't include the end walls. They want right. you to make that out of wood or, or metal yourself. Um, and so, you know, that's what we wanted to offer is an option that was just as price competitive, mm -hmm. just as qu high quality, if not higher quality yeah. than a lot of the kits that are out there. Um, and then Have installed. installed yeah. yeah. And that kind of goes along with Melanie was mentioning earlier, too. This is what they do, and they do this affordable. Same with their consulting. His consulting is very affordable, and it's because they truly have a passion for bettering the grower, for bettering whether you're a home gardener, you're wanting to do this professionally, and that is something that I can really get behind and support. Someone who genuinely just wants to see other growers be mm. successful, and I feel like a lot of times that's missing. That is really, really heavily missing, and like he was stating, and all these other places, there's great places to sort out, source out greenhouses, but I had it delivered and installed and, you know, putting it together, that was the biggest obstacle for me and Nathan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and too, you know, there's a, a level of consulting that comes with that, yeah. you know. But w while we're building this, um, you know, to talk about how to condition it for the, the storm. You right. Know, if yeah. you have a storm coming or, you know, where it might be the best way to orient it or where to place it. Yeah. Uh, for my customers that, um, 
you know, already have a garden space, uh, they, you know, they can shoot me pictures and we can go back and forth and kind of talk about how they should prep the soil before we build it mm -hmm. in place. Uh, so you also get kind of that consultation while you're here, you know, yeah. how, how often should I change out the plastic? How often should I do yeah. these things? There's something too about that happening in person that is just a lot easier for me than like right. looking through someone's, you know, uh, PDF or instruction manual or that right. kind of thing. No, I agree. And that's one thing I loved about this one is that it is movable. Uh, so we will be able to take this with us. That was another benefit. It just comes apart in just two pieces. Uh, so it can be easily moved, easily reassembled. He also kind of explained that to Nathan. Nathan should be able to put it back together himself, mm -hmm. uh, which is really nice. But then if we don't need it, we can move it around the yard and have meat chickens in it or whatever. Yeah. It was just really kind of a no-brainer for us when we started thinking through all that stuff. So we were also talking earlier, he does these greenhouses, but he also does chicken schooners. So if that is something you're interested in, I'm going to let him kind of tell you guys what he offers there and what the availability is. Yeah. So we have, um, you know, you could use the, the tables in here if you were going to do uh, like a egg mobile or a, Yeah. Uh, I think those know, are really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, you know, being able to have the chickens on grass yeah. and get to fresh pasture is really important. Uh, so you could probably put, you know, between 250 to 300 laying hens That's in here. That's a lot. Uh, you know, they'd mostly just be roosting in here at yeah. night, ranging outside. You could even have the nest boxes outside. Mm -hmm. um, there's a company out of Australia that, that kind of has a similar setup to that. It's where all the feeders and nest boxes and water's outside where they can day range. That's um, cool. If you do meat chickens, you could probably do 200, 250 meat chickens in here. Um, and as long as you're moving it to fresh pasture every day, um, we have about a dozen laying hens we just leave in the same place. Mm -hmm. So what we, how we use our tunnels at my house um, that, that are built the same footprint uh, is we have three separate zones, I guess. Uh, an outside growing zone, a greenhouse zone, and then our chicken coop where it has a dozen chickens in it. So the, the chickens are our composter basically. Yeah. All the food scraps, anything we have goes into that this coop. Those chickens turn it into soil in like no time flat. Yeah. And then the next year we scoot uh, the chickens out of the way, move the greenhouse over there, and that's where our tomatoes and peppers and, and squash are going to be. Uh, and then where the, t the tomatoes were, that'll get flowers. Where the flowers were, the chickens will go. There's a good yeah. system. There's a, yeah, it's a system. So, so are the chicken rotation. schooners all this size, or do you have smaller sizes? Yeah, so that they're, this would be the, the prairie schooner version, okay. and then we're going to do a mini schooner version. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we'll probably do a similar thing for rabbits, too, is we'll have a little rabbit schooner where you're just able yeah. to pick it up it'll be about four foot tall and you just it'll just so slide on that. skits yeah yeah okay well yeah. that's awesome so i am totally over the moon about this he just seriously made my whole week you guys know this has been something that nathan and i have been pondering and trying to figure out financially what made sense just knowing that we could get this one here and installed for the same price of what we could just buy something like this for uninstalled and we couldn't even like I said, a wooden one, we would have to go probably half the size and then there's no way we could move it. So I just feel like so incredibly lucky that you were like, you know, doing this and that we knew you and we could have this here and offer it to you guys. Uh, I will put all of their information down below on how you can get a hold of him for farm consulting, for the hoop house, for chicken schooners. But I can tell you, I am one happy customer. That's right. Uh, like you <laughs> I'm sure Good. we will have lots of other happy customer stories to tell. Um, but I've mentioned Sean and Melanie all the time and you guys ask us a lot of questions. So I think it was really good to be able to put a face with the name that I throw <laughs> around all the time. Uh, but you guys go show them some love and support on Instagram. And if you have any questions, all their information will be down below. But thanks for hanging out with us. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah.